Morning peeps. Um, so, first review. Uh, as we can see, the new Bronco Russian KV122 based off the KV85 chassis. Just uh, upgunned, up armoured and improved. Kit number CB35122 uh, recently purchased from E Models. I think it was 40 quid. Um, we'll get box art, there's nothing special on there, nothing really to worry about. Um, let's start looking at the bits. Well, to start out, I have got all the bits ready and taken them all out of the bag, it's just saved me messing about. We have the hole top. As you can see, ooh, ooh, dodgy shadows. We have the internal structures already in place for the torsion bars. Um, decent detail on the outside, nice and crisp. Detail underneath. Uh, those they do show through, and they may be slight sink marks where the torsion bars are. But how often do we look at the bottom of a tank model? Not very. So. Not overly concerned with any of that. Very cool. And what comes with it in the same bag is a little track jig. Yeah, highly interesting, I know. And individual track links, all on sprues, so yeah, they're going to be real fun to clean up. Um, fortunately, the gates don't appear to be in too bad of a position. Fairly well detailed, like standard KV85 type track to me. The only slight issues are the model Caston style, and um, these, which means they're fully workable. And those focus. Those are the track pins. So yeah, that could be fun. Um, but we shall see what happens. They might end up workable. They may not. So the Tracks look fairly well detailed. Due to the fact they're on the sprue, there's no ejector pin marks or anything on them, so it shouldn't be too bad to clean up. I may actually, may actually do a little video showing how they go together. In the next bag, we have the first main sprue. <coughs> this is, we can see we got the fenders, rear plate, engine deck, engine cover, exhaust deflectors, various little random parts and this kit does have some interior so we do have a I think it's a driver's station and an engine so we have the driver's seat as we can see here we have you know, some nice detail work on this upper upper deck we've got some decent weld details around the sides and again no ejector pin marks or flash that I can see sorry no nothing at all on there EPMs on the underside but the tracks run so close to the underside of those you'll never see them and fender stays probably the fender ends but yeah no problems with that sprue at all looking good so far now this is what leads me to believe there's going to be another option or different version of this tank coming out because we have a different complete top deck um, and side skirts I believe these are the ones actually used on this model um, as we can see, again we have the same kind of levels of detail, same weld seams, textures, yeah, same engine deck cover. Um, the, the fenders do look, oop, not the camera there, sorry. Uh, fenders do look slightly different. Uh, again, it's one of these things, unless you really, really know what you're looking at, you can't really tell. We do have the actual tooth turret ring in there 
again quite like you'll never see it unless you model it with the, uh, the turret blown off but then there's nothing to actually show inside there and a few <coughs> or a bunch sorry bunch of tiny little greebly bits hooks and uh, I think they're the they're the uh, tow cable shackles uh, yep, that all looks mighty fine as well. Oh, missed that cupola. Yeah, it's a piece of plastic. Um, <coughs> next we have the next big sprue, which contains the turret and another back plate, gun mantlet, trunnions for the gun grab rails for the size of the turret and a few other ancillaries odds and sods as we can see this is uh, slide moulded there's some very nice texture on the turret so that should show up nicely flat smooth rolled steel plate on the top with weld seams with the turret size and base both showing the cast texture as does the mantlet. Maybe a little over scale, but I'd rather have it slightly over scale and be visible than to scale and you can't really see it. <coughs> Excuse me, it's early in the morning, I just got up. Uh, we have the really, really delicate little grab rails. May end up replacing those with wires, I'll probably break when I try and take them off. And close up just some of the other details. And yeah, uh, oh, oh, part I can recognise. I think they maybe the uh, track cleaners or for cleaning the gunge out of the with well, modern associated guck that builds up in the drive wheels or sprockets, one or the other. <coughs> That we have another gun mantlet and a few odds and sods. Is that? Yeah, that's in focus. Um, again, we've got the same texture, but this is what's leading me to believe, excuse my stomach rumbling, that there may well be a tank destroyer variant. Please be something like an ISU 152 with a BL 10. Um, I think the only kit available of that is an old Dragon one, it doesn't look too great. Um, again, more tiny little bits. This is the thing you get with Bronco kits, you do get a lot of small parts, I hope. <coughs> Very well engineered. Again, no flash. No EPMs in dumb places. Um, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um guess that's the, I think that's the back plate, or part of, and um, yeah, a lot of little fiddly bits, I don't know what they are, oh, but that's a pickaxe, <laughs> um, yeah, that's right, all the plastic's looking great so far, there's no flash, no nastiness, and we're on to sprocket and idler and some of the various more random running gear as we can see again very fine detailed parts and very well detailed you know, a little more surface texture on that I think it's um, part of the ve uh, ventilation system and we have sprocket covers final drives this is probably almost invisible actually at that angle right um, then we have the idle wheel and the sprocket itself both looking nicely detailed round flash three um, annoying sprue attachment points in between the teeth I really don't like it when they do that it makes a 
the clean up a bit of a pig. Uh, there are two sprues of this. Um, obviously a tank with one sprocket and one idle isn't going to go very far. But it's identical sprue, so we don't need to see that. And we have another sprue which contains the engine and some of the running gear. Um, I'll hold it up here. As you can see, we've got the exhaust, engine blocks, cylinder banks, all that good stuff. And that is the cradle that the engine sits in. I believe it actually sticks to the underside of the top deck rather than sticking into the bottom deck of the chassis. Here we have some, some of the wheels. Again, finely detailed, no flash, no miss moulds, nothing at all bad to write home about or swear about. Well, until we can't put it together and it might not fit. Uh, swing arms, torsion bars, and various other little bits and pieces that go to making the tank up. I think this is the last sizeable sprue, and this is the one carrying, well, the, a gun barrel we won't be using. These bits, I believe, are for the top of the fenders and under the turret, because I think they had to increase the size of the turret to get the 122mm gun in. Another back plate looks identical to the previous one. The bow MG which uh, see if we can get it in shot and focused. Does seem to have some good detail. Um, I can't actually see it because I'm looking through the camera. Um, yeah, it's got some it's got some nice detail on it, but again, it's going to be interior. You're never going to see it. I have the 85 mil barrel from the KV85, I guess, which is slide molded, one piece, hollow end. All the good stuff we'd like to see. We have another MG, which I believe might be the roof mounted one. Some more fender stays, grab handles, periscopes, random modments and bits and pieces. <coughs> oh, this is not good. Right, um, but one of the things I've spotted about this kit already is I'm having a quick look through the instructions, is the ubiquitous oil barrels or fuel cans that go on the back, which is these and these. As you can see they're slide molded and where the end caps attach they've got the strapping built in so you won't have any of the annoying seams you normally do get on these. Thumbs up for that one Bronco, that's a good job on that. Other than that again no flash, no burring, no blah de blah um, barely see any seam mark with the two halves of the sprue come together then I think this is probably the one we're going to be using annoyingly this is more of the same kind of parts and here we have another mantlet and there's bits that go on the side of the fenders we do get a one piece barrel but it's solid and then on that we've got a two piece muzzle brake so I believe this is the gun that's used it looks looks big enough to be the 122 rather than the 85 um, but it's quite a sizable muzzle brake and there are a couple of located points and the gates are moulded on the back so we should be able to make a decent job of that not quite sure what Mickey Mouse ears are those bits there I'm sure we'll find out when we look through the destructions or actually get around to building it and then another sprue of wheelie parts which I think is the same sprue I already showed so there we go, there's several of those obviously because again, tank without many wheels doesn't move very far. And we get a couple of sprues.
series of these, which are the swing arms and the two different flavours of trying to get the light on that. Two different flavours of the end caps that go on the swing arms. Not sure what the options mean, but they're probably not visible anyway once you've got the wheels on, so I'll just go with you have one that I think looks coolest. And that is all of these sprues basically. Um, just all I've got left in the box is the mirror sprues, the extra sprues of track. Um, yeah, that's about it. And we get what I'm going to call the Bronco card because the Dragon don't do them anymore. Try and avoid any nasty, nasty glare or anything off of it. Uh, again, not a lot on here really. We've got a couple of sprues there. Oops, getting a bit dark. Those are the uh, engine grill covers because there are optional photo etch ones which we can see on how the little sheet of etch nothing too nasty or fiddly by the looks of things a few clear parts but you know they're only like headlights and stuff and copper cable for the tow cables oh, trying to get the light on <laughs> this is really not liking this um yeah it's better than the steel stuff that dragon provides it actually flexes and then a ludicrously, ludicrously large sheet of decals, which, having had a look, the only ones we're actually going to use are the two little red stars there. The rest of all those numbers, the Balkan Kreutz, yep, no need for any of them. Right. And on to the destruction manual. Printed in nice glossy it's not in full colour the manual is in semi colour um, bit of blur, blurb about the tank itself open it up and we have the colour call outs in Hobby Colour Mr Hobby, Tamiel and Humbrol um, but as it's Russian green, silver, steel and flat black, it's not too difficult. I'm sure we can figure out a different version of those if we need to. Have our sprue map, which is numbered. Um, not entirely sure why people like that. Um, I can maybe understand on a plane where you might clip all the parts off the sprues first, but on a tank with this many pieces, it's not a good idea. And we start off into the construction with the... Let's get a better pointy thing, shall we? Let's find something better to point this stuff with. Yeah. Found a use of the cheap-ass paintbrush. Right. Putting in the mounts for the torsion bars. Um, and then more torsion bars, back plate going on. The dampers it's a fairly basic driver station I think but it's nice that it's got one anyway more bits going in for the driver station and you can see there, those things I'll point out they are the mud cleaners for the drive sprockets and over the page we're putting together the Rockets, putting in the torsion bars, putting the wheels together, putting them on. Um, blah de blah, adding more bits and pieces of the idlers, the turn rollers, half shafts, PE exhaust vent. And as you can see, we've got bits that are red. What I like about Bronco instructions is the bits that are in red are actually showing you where the bits go if you've got sub-assembly here it shows you what it should look like when it's actually on the tank or model of whatever good job far better than the Panzer IV instructions I'm dealing with from Dragon at the moment then we have the engine going together again it's a fairly basic simple engine there's nothing special about it I mean, I'll put it together and stick it in because I paid for it um, 
probably paint it and then put glue that down and you'll never see it again. But oh no, it's there. Just rearranging deck assembly. The option of the plastic or the etch grills. Uh, I'll probably go with the etch. Um, at least if you mess them up slightly, it just looks like that will damage. More of the various fiddly, greebly parts. Um, we can do the driver's periscope open or closed. Bow NG going in. You know, I'll probably do that closed. Um, and we have the fenders, the stays, those kind of roundy bits that go on there. Spare track links, the mounts for the tow cables. Then we have the top deck fenders, lower hull all going together, and the tracks. Yeah. Don't know whether I'm looking forward to them or not. The last model cast and tracks I did were for a Hetzer, and they were tiny. Elite, these are about twice the size, so it shouldn't be too heel. The you know, various random other bits of etch and grab handles and the ubiquitous barrels, as I said, going on the back. And we're on to the main gun mount. Not really what you call a breech assembly, it's more just to count, balance the weight of the barrel, I think. So it doesn't just flop. A little bit of interior turret detail um, by a couple of seats. So if you open up the hatches, you can stand someone in there and they don't fall through more than anything else. Turret MG, uh, which actually faces out of the rear of the turret on these, so kind of makes sense to have a rear firing defensive weapon in case infantry get behind you. I'll try and put a grenade through your rear, through the engine deck or something like that. Cooper are going together and going on. Um, we have clear parts for that. Again, are they going to be visible once we painted it? Probably not, but I'll mask them up and see what happens. Now, one of the sprues, uh, that one, um, yeah, the gun sprue, actually has these uh, casting numbers moulded into the sprue. You know, cut them off and put them where they go, but it doesn't actually tell you which numbers to use, how to lay them out, or where to put them. So I might have to have a quick Google image search, see if I can find out that. Um, I know roughly where they go on like a Sherman, is what numbers mean something. This, you can guarantee if you put the wrong numbers on there, someone will call you out about it. Now, oh no, that tank had those numbers. Gun, going into mantlet, turret going together. Groobly bits on the outside of the turret, turret going on, more little bits, armour plate, toe shackles, toe ropes, copper wire, one to one scale drawing, and we get to the marking option. As I said when we got to the decals, <laughs> has one little red red star either side or it's painted green. So, typically Russian. Um, I might see if I've got any propaganda or Cyrillic text decals kicking around anywhere uh, in my box of random bits. Just liven up a little. Um, but yeah, that concludes. Um, altogether it looks a nice kit. All the parts look clean and I like the instructions. Um, we shall see how we go. Um, once I've built it, I shall do a follow-up an actual build review so we can see how it actually goes together and if there are any problems with it and whether they're probably more likely my causing than anything else but that's it for now so I shall bid you adieu have fun and don't do anything dumb bye bye